ಶ್ರೀಶೈಲೇಶದಯಾಪಾತ್ರಂ ಧೀಭಕ್ತಿಯಾದಿ ಗುಣಾರಣವಂ ಯತೀಂದ್ರ ಪ್ರವಣಂ ವಂದೇ ರಮ್ಯ ಜಾಮಾತರಂ ಮುನಿ ಲಕ್ಷ್ಮೀನಾಥ ಸಾರಂಭಾಂ ನಾಥ ಯಾಮುನ ಮಧ್ಯಮಾಂ ಅಸ್ಮದಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಪರ್ಯಂತ ವಂದೇ ಗುರುಪರಂಪರಾ ಯೋ ನಿತ್ಯಂ ಅಚ್ಯುತ ಪದಾಂಬುಜಯುಗ್ಮರುಗ್ಮ ವ್ಯಾಮೋಹತಸ್ತಿತರಾಣಿತೃಣಾಯಮೇನೆ ಅಸ್ಮದ್ಗುರೋರ್ ಭಗವತೋಸ್ಯ ದೈಕಸಿಂಧೋ ರಾಮಾನುಜಸ್ಯ ಚರಣೌ ಶರಣ ಪ್ರಪದ್ಯೇ ಲೋಕಾಚಾರ್ಯಾ ಗುರವೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣಪಾದ ಸೂನವೇ ಸಂಸಾರ ಭೋಗಿ ಸಂದಷ್ಟ ಜೀವ ಜೀವಾತವೇ ನಮಃ ಯತೀಂದ್ರ ಪ್ರವಣ ವಂದೇ ರಮ್ಯ ಜಾಮಾತರ ಮುನಿ ಯೋ ನಿತ್ಯಮಚ್ಯುತ ಪದಾಂಬುಜಯುಗ್ಮರುಗ್ಮ ವ್ಯಾಮೋಹತಸ್ತಿತರಾಣಿ ತೃಣಾಯಮೇನೆ ಅಸ್ಮದ್ಗುರೋರ್ಭಗವತೋಸ್ಯದೈಕಸಿಂಧೋ ರಾಮಾನುಜಸ್ ಚರಣೌ ಶರಣ ಪ್ರಪದ್ಯೇ ಲೋಕಾಚಾರ್ಯಾ ಗುರವೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣಪಾದ ಸೂನವೇ ಸಂಸಾರ ಭೋಗಿ ಸಂದಷ್ಟ ಜೀವ ಜೀವಾತವೇ ನಮಃ so we continue with the exposition of the 50 fifth sutra <clears throat> so in the 54th sutra pillai loka acharya says akaratale kalyana gunangale chullu hayade ಇಂದ ಶೇಷತ್ವ ಗುಣತ್ತಾಲೇ ವಂದದು ಒನ್ ವೆರಿ ಇಂಪಾರ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ಕಾನ್ಸೆಪ್ಟ್ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಟು ಬಿ ನೋಟೆಡ್ ಇನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಕಾಂಟೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಈ ಸೇಸ್ ಅಕಾರತ್ತಾಲೇ ಕಲ್ಯಾಣ ಗುಣಂಗಳೈ ಚೊಲ್ಲುಹೇ ಆಲೇ ಇಂದ ಶೇಷತ್ವ ಗುಣತ್ತಾಲೇ ವಂದದು ಸೊ ಐ ವಾಸ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪ್ಲೇನಿಂಗ್ ಇನ್ ದಿ previous class how an adjective that is used in a particular context will be more meaningful when it is pertinent to the context <clears throat> if it is not pertinent to the context the adjective becomes meaningless and many a times according to the what is known as sahitya shastra or according to the rules of <clears throat> i don't know whether there is a right word equivalent word in sanskrit to say sahitya shastra because there is a ocean like system of philosophy that deals with the authoring of poetry in sanskrit it might be poetry it might be prose which is known as gadya and padya and also tempo which is a combination of gadya and padya gadya paya padya mayam kavyam tempo ritya vidhiya so when we talk about a body of literature there is a huge amount of <coughs> uh, a huge large number of treatises which actually define what is the lakshana or what is the definition of a padya kavya that is a body of literature that is authored in the form of poetry then you have gadya kavyas <coughs> which is in the form of prose then you have champu very beautiful champus like champu bharata champu ramayana champu bhagavata etc it's a combination of poetry and prose i am not sure whether such uh, branches or categories exist in any other uh, language in the world of course in kannada and tamil there are several Uh, kavyas like this in hindi it is there and uh, in english we read about the classics and also the um, the classics of shakespeare which like macbeth and uh, so many other things so many other uh, but i don't know whether they are as much in number as they are in uh, sanskrit language and secondly is there any <clears throat> rule book which actually defines 
what is the definition of a kavya how it comes into existence <clears throat> what are the qualities of a good kavya what are the fallacies or faults that can occur in the kavya etc 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 <clears throat> as far as my knowledge goes and according to what i have heard such a <clears throat> an elaborate system of knowledge or knowledge system about literature does not exist in any other language in the world <clears throat> of course for kannada and other south indian languages and also for hindi and other north indian languages there are certain such treatises which are called as lakshana lakshana granthas but 90% of them are borrowed from sanskrit only are based on the knowledge of sanskrit why i am telling this is akarathare kalyana gunangalai chollu hira padiyade so and i also <coughs> explained a in a classic example where <coughs> the adjective used to describe a person during a particular context how it has to be very meaningful and also how it has to be very apt and according to the situation otherwise it will be meaningless and in sanskrit in the shastras we also say vyartha visheshana tvapate giving an unnecessary adjective is not is not only a deficiency it's also a grave fault actually so here he says akarattale kalyana gunangale chollu hira pa chollu heyale So it is well known that the sheshatva or subservience of the jivatma to the paramatma is natural. But is there anything more to it than that? The answer is yes. since the supreme lord narayana is the repository of all the auspicious qualities there is no other option or there is no other go other than the jivatma becoming subservient to the supreme lord <clears throat> so we are reminded of a situation or instance in ramayana where lakshmana introduces himself as well as rama to <coughs> hanuman in the beginning of the kishkindha kanda so first <coughs> hanuman approaches rama and lakshmana and he in a very polished and beautiful language he <coughs> asks who rama and lakshmana are and after anjaneya or hanuman completes his speech or completes his conversation or his part of the conversation with rama and lakshmana then rama says please talk to this great person who has delivered a wonderful speech he actually <coughs> extols the virtues of the speech of hanuman in about 15 to 20 shlokas approximately then lakshmana says or introduces rama and himself to hanuma and when he introduces himself he says ahamasya varo bhrata gunair dasya mupagata he says i am his younger brother not only i am his younger brother i am also his servant who is always subservient to him why has rama forced me into subservience many times we see <coughs> some elder brother who is more elder in age he will actually force his younger brother to subservience or a father will force a son into subservience a master or a employer will force an employee into subservience but in this context hanuma uh, lakshmana when talking about himself he says 
Gunairdasya Mupagataha and according to the Sri Vaishnava Sampradaya, the four brothers, namely Rama, Lakshmana, Bharata and Shatrukna, represent four most, most, most important concepts that are associated and unique to Sri Vaishnava Sampradaya. So <clears throat> we see Rama is the Supreme Lord Narayana because even Mandodari in the Sudraga in the at the end of Yuddha Kanda, she says, Tamasah Paramodhata Shanka Chakrakada. Shivat Savakshaha Nityashti Adeya Shashwata Druha, etc. So Mandodari realized Rama to be none other than Lord Narayana himself. And in then Brahma, when he extols the qualities of Rama and also tells him. So when Brahma and others come to meet Rama after Ravana has killed and Sita has entered the fire, <coughs> Rama says, Atmanam Manusham Manye Ramam Satya Parakramam Ramam Dasharathatmajam Koham Kasya Kutovaham Agavam Stadbravitume So I will not elaborate too much because it will become a Ramayana <laughs> lecture. But this is very pertinent to the current context. That is why I am telling it. So Rama says, I don't know who I am. I am. I know that I am the son of Dasharatha. You please tell me who, who I am. Then there is a beautiful stotra or propitiation by Brahma about Rama. It's called Brahma Krita Rama Stava. The stotra of Rama by Brahma. Chaturmukha Brahma which says, Sita Lakshmi hi Bhavan Vishnu. Hu. Sita is none other than the incarnation of Goddess Lakshmi, and you are none other than Vishnu himself. So he is the Supreme Lord himself. Then Lakshmana is Shesho Lakshmana Uchete. Saksha Dramo Rakushreshtaha. Shesho Lakshmana Uchete. This statement is found in the <clears throat> Final Ravapatta Bisheka Sarga of the Supreme Yuddha Kanda. So that is Sheshatvam. That is why he is Shesha. <laughs> so he is also the Shesha Avatara. That is the Avatara of incarnation of Adi Shesha, who is the first among all the Sheshas. That is, Shesha means serpents, and also Shesha means the one who is subservient to the Supreme Lord. So, <clears throat> Lakshmana is Shesha Avatara and Shesha Swarupa. He is the incarnation of Adi Shesha. And also, he is the personification of Sheshatva or subservience. And he is called as Bhagavat Shesha. He is subservient to the Supreme Lord. He is always subservient to the Supreme Lord. It is known as Bhagavat Sheshatvam. Then we come to <coughs> Bharata. That is the third brother or the third among the four siblings who is known as Bhagavat Paratantra. <coughs> One who is Paratantra to Bhagavan. So Paratantra means what? He implicitly obeys the orders of the Supreme Lord. So many a times, Shesha may not obtain or obey the orders because he has little bit of Swatantri. Because what does Lakshmana say when Rama and Sita have to uh, have decided to go to the forest? Lakshmana was not invited by Rama to serve him. Whereas Lakshmana himself insists that I want to come with you both to take care of you. Here once again there is a very 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 great nuance that exists <coughs> which is identified only by the Sri Vaishnava commentators. 
So this is not to belittle any other commentators, but Sri Vaishnava commentators have been so knowledgeable, so unique in their depth of analysis that they have very beautifully uh, observed this nuance and also mentioned about it in their comment. So in the Indian context, generally, the general rule is, suppose a daughter has come from her husband's house to her mother's house. <clears throat> and she has to be sent back to the husband's house after staying some time here to have some good time with her parents. So generally when the daughter is sent back in India, even today, in many cases where tradition is followed, a woman is not sent alone. Of course, in the last 30, 40 years, the, <clears throat> all the traditions have changed. And uh, it has led to a lot of disasters and also how many things that is not very important. So when the daughter is being sent by her parents to her in-law's place or her husband's house, generally she is not sent alone. Either the husband has to come there, come to the come to his in-law's house, that is the daughter's parents' house, and then take her back to his house. Then the two of them go, then there is no problem. But she is never sent alone because it is not advisable to send women outside alone. That was what was the norm in those days. Except for some ordinary things, like if she has to go for a show, go to a shop or something, that's not an issue. Because they did not have independent employment and all those things. Nowadays, people actually comment upon it as they were depriving the women of their rights and things like this, which is totally incorrect. Because the aim, aim of life itself was totally different from what it is today. So it all depends on that. So I will not go into that. <clears throat> so this is the general rule that when the daughter is sent back to her husband's house, she has to be either accompanied by her husband or somebody else by her, some brother or sometimes even a young, young cousin would accompany her and drop her at his house or at her husband's house or something like that. Because it is not advisable to <coughs> send a lady alone to her husband's house. But <coughs> the Sri Vaishnava Acharyas actually feel otherwise in this case. <clears throat> they say it is advisable, not wrong, not incorrect to send the daughter alone to her house because she will be in the, in a, in, as if she is in a trance because her single-minded focus is on reaching her husband's house and she is as if in a trance which is the fruit of <coughs> penance. So without any hindrance, she will actually reach her husband's house without any problem. So there is no, nothing wrong in that. Or no problems in that. Whereas it has to be worried that if she is going with her husband, then whether she reaches her destination or not, that is doubtful. Because these two newly married husband and wife they will forget themselves in the company of each other. And therefore, there has to be an escort to send these two people together. <laughs> <clears throat> so that is what Lakshmana says. He says, Aham sarvam karishyami jagrata svapataschate bhavamstu sahavai deshya girisam when you are sleeping and when you are awake, I will serve, render all services to you. Whether you want it or not, I will render the services. And what you what will you do? You, you enjoy your life along with Sita. Bhava amstu sahavai dehya girisa So here even Lakshmana is not asking for permission. Shall I come with you? He declares himself, I will come with you. 
because if you both forget yourself in each other's company, who is there to take care of you? So whether you want it or not, I am going to come with you. And I want to serve you and take care of you, take care of your security, etc. So the Sheshatva is, the person who is Shesha is totally subservient, but he has a little bit of Swatantriya. Where he declares, I want to come with you and take care of you. It's like many a times what happens, a young boy wants to enjoy some time alone with his friends. His mother or father is so worried about his security. No, I want to come with you. Then the boy will feel, what is this? My father, he doesn't even understand. I want to enjoy some game of cricket or something and be with my friends. Or I want to make some, uh, cut some jokes or enjoy the company of my peers. He is spoiling the entire show. So like that, that boy might feel. But here, Shesha has a little bit of swatantya. He says, I will take care of you. I will come with you. Whereas Bharata is not like that. He is at the next higher level. Where he says, he is Bhagavad Paratantra. Bhagavad Paratantra means he is totally dependent on the Supreme Lord. Dependent means, dependent is actually an understatement. He is totally commanded by the Supreme Lord. So what happened when Bharata insisted that Rama should come back to the kingdom and become the king? Rama said, nothing doing. I want to take uh, uh, keep up the promise I have given to my father. So <clears throat> I will here, be here. You go and rule the kingdom, rule over the kingdom. And then, of course, Bharata asked you, please give me your sandals. I will... <clears throat> establish them, I'll consecrate them and then in their name I'll run the kingdom. So here what happens? Bharata is totally Paratantra, Bhagavat Paratantra. Then the next stage and the further final stage which is known as Antimopaya Nishta and Sri Vaishnava philosophy are both seen and Krishna through. So in the first shloka of the <clears throat> Ayodhya Kanda of Ramayana, he says, Gachata matu nakulam bharate natada nakaha, Shetrugno nitya shetrugna, meet of preeti puraskritaha. So after the <clears throat> all the wedding parties, that is the four couples, Rama, Lakshmana, Bharata, and Shetrugna, along with their consorts, they came to came back to Ayodhya after from Mithila. Bharata wanted to go to his uncle's place. At that time, Palmiki says, Shatrugno nitya shatrugnaha neetaf preeti puraskritaha. Shatrugna was taken away by Bharata. <laughs> that is the literal meaning. So, Bharata did not give any choice to Shatrugna, whether, oh Shatrugna, do you want to come with me? Why don't you come with me? Why don't you accompany me? No. He was not given any choice. He was just taken away, just as the example is given. He is a person who is going on a tour. He has to have his clothes and other things that are relevant things. He puts it in a suitcase and takes the suitcase. Will you ask the suitcase whether you, do you want to accompany me or not? No. Because the suitcase is an insentient entity. So nobody will ask a suitcase whether you want to come with me or not because it's insentient. It will say, it cannot say yes or no because it does not have any consciousness. In a similar manner, Shatrugna was taken away by Bharata to accompany him to his uncle's place. So in Shatrugna we see two aspects, that is Bhagavata Paratantya, that is the first stage, and final stage is Bhagavata Helsanidhire, Achidvat Paratantra Rai. So they call it as Jadavat Paratantriya or Achidvat Paratantriya. 
So Bhagavan is Rama, then Bhagavat Cheshatva is represented by Lakshmana, Bhagavat Paratantriya is represented by Bharata, and then you have Bhagavata Paratantriya, which is represented by Shatrugna and ba the final, the fifth stage is Bhagavata Bhagavata Sannidhira, Achidvat Paratantrava Ikidakpadi. So Bhagavata Achidvat Paratantri, Bhagavata Vishaya Achidvat Paratantri, or Janavat Paratantri. So this is what is known as Antimopa in Sri Vaishnava Parlance. Uh, incidentally, I mentioned these things because these concepts are very, very, very important as far as Sri Vaishnava philosophy is concerned. And I am sure this is the uniqueness and greatness of Sri Vaishnava philosophy because it has identified these levels and these <coughs> concepts which are very, very unique, very interesting and also enjoyable also. So that is why I said, what is the difference between Sheshatva and Paratantriya? So in Sheshatva, little bit of Swatantriya is there. But in Paratantriya, there is no Swatantriya at all. And in the context of Sheshatva, that is Lakshmana becoming Shesha, why did he become Shesha? Did Rama force him into subservience? No. He says to Lakshmana, Ahamasya avaro bhrata gunair dasya mupagata. I have become his servants, servant, having seen his wonderful qualities. So he is such a noble person. Rama is such a noble person that any person worth his salt cannot but do without becoming his servant. So this Dasya or Sheshatva is voluntary. It is also on account of him, Lakshmana being a person, good person, honest person, sincere person, and also having come into contact with the wonderful qualities of Lord Rama. Similarly, here also, the Lord is not imposing Sheshatva on us. He is not imposing Sheshatva on the Jivatmas. These Jivatmas have become Sheshas to him, to the Supreme Lord, because of the wonderful qualities that exist in the Supreme Lord. So though we actually don't realize the qualities, inherently the Atma, which is Jnana and the Swarupa, is also Shesha because it is aware of the qualities of the Supreme Lord. So that is what is mentioned here. Akaratale Kalyana Gunangale Chulhayale in the Sheshatam Gunatale Vandadi. So there are so many relationships. So Amsham Shibhava is there. Pitra Putra Bhava is there between the Atma, they call it as Navita Sambandham, Pitata Rakshaka Sheshi, Swamyata, Swamya Bhadha, etc. It is mentioned in the separate work called Navita Sambandham in the Jiva in Pitalokacharya, one of the Ashtarachar has sins. But here, Sheshatva is the most important aspect that exists in the Jiva Atma, which is on account of the divine, wonderful, auspicious qualities of the Supreme Lord. So that is what we have to understand here. So that is explained by Swami Manavala Mamani in this, uh, in this manner. Abhimata vishayat til sheshattam sukharupa mahirade. Abhimata til gunamadiya havand vandada hiyale. Ahiyale anno inna rulicca ihirar akaratta akaratile inde tolangi. Anavade ishwara nude rakshakatta pratipadakaman akaratile. Anda rakshano payogiyana kanyana gunangale chullu hiyale. Ishwara Vishavana in the Sheshatam and the Gunangaladiya Havandadi and Kai. So Ishwara is the Lakshakar, the protector. What is the, what does protection actually mean? Anishta Nivirti and Ishta Prabh, warding off those that are undesirable and also providing what is desirable. That is what is known as Lakshakatva. That Lakshakatva is 
mentioned by the akara and in the meaning of the akara what is embedded all the auspicious qualities of the supreme lord are embedded in the meaning of akara therefore this sheshatva or subservience is purely on account of the divine qualities of the supreme lord and not on account of some <coughs> forced not on account of some force or uh, some uh, compulsion or something like that ahayal idum sukharupamay rikka kurayillai enna karuthi why is he mentioning this he is mentioning this because bhagavat sheshatva is of utmost bliss it gives utmost happiness when one realizes that he is shesha to the supreme god he is subservient to the supreme god as of now people like me and many other people why don't we enjoy life why don't we crib about many things no oh, this is not correct that is not correct he is not good he is not good i have been wrong in this manner i have been <coughs> many people hurt me i have been hurt etc because we have not realized our unique quality of sheshatva or subservience to the supreme lord once this is realized once we realize that we are subservient to the supreme lord then no misery can come to this jivatma or any jivatma for that matter therefore this sheshatva is of utmost bliss and happiness sheshatva is not of any <coughs> is not the cause of any misery as in the case of where it has come on account of our previous karmas having mentioned that he says the 55th sutra sheshatvame atma vakkaswarupam and 56th sutra says sheshatvame illada podu swarupam illai so the reason that we have not understood ourselves is <coughs> what he is going to tell next atma pahara bhavade swatantram indira ninaive swatantram amporo illaya evidum <coughs> so when a person whether it is me or you or anybody for that matter if he thinks i am independent i am not subservient to anybody then he fails to exist he is as good as non existent that is the literal meaning of these three sutras which is commented upon by anavala mahuni in a beautiful manner anal upadhikaman idu swarupame enna swarupam anne enna rudichaira So the question arises: If this is on account of some particular condition, then how is it that it is very much desirable? Because <clears throat> whatever is unconditional is acceptable in a general sense. Whatever is conditional, it's not acceptable in a general sense. Once again, of course, there are some exceptions. suppose a young boy who is subservient to his father he is asked by the father to study stay study well so if the young boy says if you give me a chocolate i will study otherwise i will not study that is totally 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 wrong because the young boy is subservient to his father and he has to do what his father has told because the father always wants he is interested in the welfare of the son and therefore the way, if the son puts some condition if you give me a chocolate i'll study then it is totally incorrect that is not is happening nowadays because children are actually bribed to do what is good for them so therefore ada avade uhanda vishayathil idam sukharupatvatte gunakrutatvatte hetuva hachundu heyane குணகிருத்தோ 
സ്വത്വമാത്മനി സഞ്ജാതം സ്വാവിത്വം ബ്രഹ്മണി സ്ഥിതം ആത്മദാസ്യം ഹരേ സ്വാമ്യം സ്വഭാവം ച സദാസ്വര ദാസഭൂത സർവേശ്യാത്മാനസ് പരമാത്മന മാന്യഥാ ലക്ഷണം തേഷാം ബന്ധേ മോക്ഷേ തഥൈവ വേരിയസ് പുരാണ എസ്പെഷ്യലി വിഷ്ണു പുരാണ ഇത്യാദികളിലേ ഇത്തയ് ആത്മാവക്ക് സ്വഭാവമാഹച്ചൊല്ലുഹയാലേ ശേഷത്വമേ ആത്മാവക്ക് സ്വരൂപം എന്തൈ so there are two aspects one aspect is since this subservience of the jivatma is according to the is based on the divine qualities of the supreme lord not on anything else it is actually conditional in a way but such a condition is an acceptable condition not an unacceptable condition it's a desirable condition that is on one hand on the other hand even otherwise <clears throat> assuming that is it's only a hypothetical question assuming that the supreme lord does not possess all these qualities it, it's not possible of course but as i said it's a hypothetical question even then the jeevatma is always subservient to the supreme lord because <laughs> as we all understand or as we all can realize to a small extent so the degrees of realization vary from person to person but i feel i have realized a small iota that nothing is in our hands even the breathing on say breathe out and then inhale and exhalation inhalation and exhalation is not in our hands because even when it's sleeping inhalation and exhalation happens even when a person is unconscious it happens do we do it voluntarily it's an involuntary thing that means it is not in our hands it's in the hands of the supreme lord similarly what happens today what happens in the next moment we don't know because nothing is in our hands therefore everything is in the hands of the supreme lord don't be we have we can not plan we can plan we feel we are planning we feel we are doing everything but no it's not like that everything is in the hands of the supreme lord then <clears throat> does the jeeva swatantrya or not kartritva or not doership or not agency or not? yes he has doership with regard to a small within a small sphere of <coughs> life he has some doership he has independence that is a the brahma sutra it says karta shastra arthavatva if everything was predetermined then there would have been no need for the shastras which say which talk about the do's and don'ts of life but that doesn't mean he has any swatantriya so that swatantriya is also subs comes under the subservience that is given to him by the paramatma therefore in this context he says dasabhuta swatas sarve atmanah paramatmanah all the jivatmas are servants of the supreme lord by nature ജീവാത്മാസ്വരീവാത്മാസ്വരീവാത്മാസ്വരീവാത്മാസ്വരീവാത്മാസ്വരീവാത്മാസ്വരീവാത്മാസ്വരീവാത്മാസ്വരീവ
then in other context it is being mentioned that jnana nandamaya stvatma the jivatma is of the nature of knowledge and bliss jnana and ananda so that is what is being mentioned extensively in the upanishads here pilloka acharya is mentioning sheshatve atma ut swarupa how is it possible so then he says sheshatve en avadharipane why is pilloka acharya stressing or asserting that sheshatva itself is the main nature of the jiva because jnanananda me swatma and several other vedic injunctions specifically mentioned that the jiva atma is the nature of knowledge and bliss jnana and ananda why is pralokha acharya insisting like this then he says atma vastuk allada porum swarupam illayo venna arudichirar sheshatvam illada poru swarupam illai enne ശേഷത്വമില്ലാതെന്നുമത്തെന്നുമത്തെന്നുമത്തെന്നുമത്തെന്നുമത്തെന്നുമത്തെന്നുമത്തെന്നുമത്തെന്നുമത്തെന്ന
severely kuladokacharya says what is the fruit or result of a person who thinks that i am independent so everybody has to realize that this jivatma is dependent subservient to the supreme lord otherwise he will become a thief and as a result he will lose his atma he will lose his very existence so it is very 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 important to first understand no understand and then realize that this jivatma belongs this jivatma belongs to the supreme lord and not to myself that is what he is going to tell later very beautiful example devar helak visheshamana puroda shaktai ಸ್ವಾತಂತ್ರ್ಯಬುಧಿ ಎನ್ನು ಮತ್ತೈ ದರ್ಶಿಪ್ಪಿ ಕಿರಾರ್ ಮೇ ದಿನಂಡು ವಾಕ್ಯತ್ತಾರೆ ಆತ್ಮಾಪಹಾರ ಮಾವದೆ ಎನ್ನೆ ತೊಡಂಗಿ ಅದಾವದೆ ಯೋನ್ಯಥಾ ಸಂತಮಾತ್ಮಾನ ಅನ್ಯಥಾ ಪ್ರತಿಪದ್ಯತೆ ಕಿಂ ತೇನ ಕೃತಂ ಪಾಪಂ ಚೋರೇಣಾತ್ಮಾಪಹಾರಿಣ ಎಂದ್ರೇ ಸರ್ವ ಪಾಪ ಮೂಲ ಮಾಹಚ್ಚುನ್ನ ಆತ್ಮಾಪಹಾರ ಮಾವದೆ ತನ್ ಸ್ವರೂಪಂ ಸ್ವತಂತ್ರಂ ಎಂಗಿರ ಪ್ರತಿಪತ್ತಿ ಸ್ವತಂತ್ರ ಮಾಮಳವಿಲ್ ಅಸನ್ನೇವಾ ಎಂಗಿರ ಪಡಿಯೇ ಸ್ವರೂಪಂ ಇಲ್ಲೆಯಾಯ್ ಬಿಡು ಇಂಗೈ ಆಹಯಾಂ ಶೇಷತ್ವಮಿಲ್ಲಾದ ಪೋದು ಸ್ವರೂಪಮಿಲ್ಲೈ ಎನ್ನ ತಟ್ಟಿಲ್ಲೈ ಎನ್ನು ಕರೆತ್ತು ಸೊ ಹಿ ಸೇಸ್ ದಿ ಕ್ವಶನ್ ಇಸ್ ರೈಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಸಚ್ ಅ ಗ್ರೇಟ್ ಸಿನ್ ಟು ಫೀಲ್ ದ ಟೈಮ್ ಇಂಡಿಪೆಂಡೆಂಟ್ ಎಸ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಆಲ್ ದಿ ಸಿನ್ಸ್ that a jivatma commits he is on account of his inherent <coughs> thought that he is independent because if he has realized that he is subservient to the supreme lord he is part of the supreme lord he is totally commanded by the supreme lord he can never 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 keep a step in the wrong direction suppose i tell lies telling lies is one of the <coughs> serious crimes according to our shastras so despite knowing that if i tell a lie if i utter a lie what does it mean it means that i have not realized the realization that i am subservient to the supreme lord has not dawned upon me so it is very very important to realize that this jivatma is subservient to the supreme man and if the person doesn't realize then it means he is a thief of the highest order and also he can never have any realization of the higher order later on in this context there is a very beautiful shloka by swami parashara but i don't know i don't remember uh, the entire shloka i'll just see if it is available because it's very pertinent to the current context so since especially uh, keshava acharya is a great devotee of the shrinigam temple as we are all we all are i want to narrate this shloka authored by the great parashara bhatta of whom i am a great great fan <laughs> to put it in uh, today's language but i am also a great devotee of him once again gunair dasya upagata which is as follows i immediately googled it and got it tumme hamme kutastate tadapi kutaidam ve ramoda pramanat etat janadi siddhat anubhava vibhavat sopi sakrosha eva ಕ್ಷೀಸುಜೀಸ್ಯಾತ್ಪಕ್ಷಪಾತಿ ಸೈತಿ ಮೃಗಲಹೆ ಮೃಗ್ಯಮಧ್ಯಸ್ತವತ
extremely wonderful shloka. <clears throat> so the meaning is as follows. Once when Swami Parashara Bhattar went to the Sirangam temple, <clears throat> the Abhishekam of the wonderful, wonderful Nambirumal, as he is known, the Utsava Murti, had just been completed. And the Lord Nambirumal was still adorned with the wet cloth that is actually uh, that uh, the Arthakas make him wear when the Abhishekam has to be performed. So he was, they were yet to actually remove the wet cloth and then do all the rituals and then adorn him with a new cloth. So at that time, so for a, probably five minutes or ten minutes, for all the other paraphernalia to come and <laughs> for the physical activities to take place, there will be a gap, a gap of five to ten minutes. So at that time, Swami Parashara Bhattar went there. <clears throat> and then he saw the Supreme Lord Nambiruman, that is the Utsava Murti, <clears throat> standing there, having completed his Abhishekam and standing there in the wearing the wet cloth. Then immediately Swami Parashar Bhattar was had a beautiful conversation, imaginary conversation with the Supreme Lord. So he said, why, is, why are you standing here like this in front of me, wearing a wet cloth? <clears throat> so then what happened? A dialogue occur, occurred in the mind of Swami Parashara Bhattar. <clears throat> so he said, uh, and Swami Parashara Bhattar went to see, went, went near the Lord. It seems that the Lord told, Tvam me, he told Swami Parashara Bhattar, you belong to me. So Swami Nambirumal is the Supreme Lord Narayana. And Parashara Bhattar imagines himself to be an ordinary Jivatma who has not realized his subservience or Sheshatma. <clears throat> so as he went there, then Nambirumal has utmost compassion for his subjects for his children, the Jivatma, who we are. So it seems Nambirumal told Swami Parashara Bhattar, Tvam me, Tvam you, me, you belong to me. Mama me, that is the genitive case. Tvam mama, so you are, you belong to me. Then Parashara Bhattar, who actually <coughs> puts himself in the place of a Jivatma, he said, no, 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 I cannot accept it. Aham me. I belong to me only. Who said I belong to you? You are not telling what is correct. I don't belong to you. I belong to me only. <clears throat> then, so, uh, Lord Nambirumal asked, how can you tell it? How can you tell that you belong to yourself? Actually, you belong to me. Then Swami Parashara Bhattar said, he was <laughs> like almost quarreling. Tadapi kutaha idam. So, when, when there is a quarrel between two people, one person accuses the other of by saying, you are telling it, lie. Then what will the other person, the opposite, opposite person say? You are telling a lie. I am not telling a lie. This is how <laughs> quarrels happen in the, in the world, as we know. So as soon as Nambirumar said, how do you say you belong to yourself? Then Swami Parashara Bhattar, who is actually in the, <coughs> who uh, visualizes himself in the place of an ordinary jiva, is how can you tell that I belong to you? How can you tell that I belong to you? <clears throat> then he says, then Swami uh, Nambirumal says, Vedamula Pramanati. 
ಏತಾದಿ ಸಿದ್ಧಾತಿ ಅನುಭವ ವಿಭವಾತಿ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಪರಾಶರ ಭಟ್ ಟೆಲ್ಸ್ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಪರಾಶರ ಭಟ್ಟ ನಂಬರ್ ಮಾಡ್ ಸೇಸ್ ನೋ ಇಟ್ ಸಿ ವೈ ಆರ್ ಯು ಬಿಕಮಿಂಗ್ ವೈ ಆರ್ ಯು ಆಕ್ಚುಲಿ ಬಿಕಮಿಂಗ್ ಸೋ ಎಮೋಷನಲ್ ಐ ವಾಂಟ್ ಟು ಕನ್ವಿನ್ಸ್ ಯು ದಟ್ ಯು ಬಿಲಾಂಗ್ ಟು ಮೀ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಬೀನ್ ಮೆನ್ಷನ್ ಇನ್ ದಿ ವೇದಾಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಅನಾದಿ ಸಿದ್ಧಾತಿ ಅನುಭವ ವಿಭವ ಅಂಡ್ ಸೆವರಲ್ ಗ್ರೇಟ್ ಪೀಪಲ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಟೈಮ್ ಇನ್ ಮೆಮೋರಿಯಲ್ great people have realized that the jivatma belongs to the supreme lord therefore i am telling this <coughs> then swami parashara but says so pi sakrosha eva no i don't believe your pramanas i don't accept your vedas who told that what is mentioned in the vedas is correct because it is you who has told the vedas because ಪಾರ್ಶಿಯಲ್ ಪ್ರಮಾಣ ಪ್ರಮಾಣ ಟೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ದಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಪಾರ್ಶಿಯಲ್ ಟು ಯು ವೆನ್ ದೇರ್ ಇಸ್ ಅ ಡಿಬೇಟ್ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಯು ಇನ್ವೈಟ್ ಎ ಜಡ್ಜ್ ಹೂ ಇಸ್ ಪಾರ್ಶಿಯಲ್ ಟು ಗಿವ್ ದಿ ವರ್ಡಿಕ್ಟ್ i don't accept all these things and even those who said who realized that the jivatma is subservient to the supreme lord they are all your servants how automatically they will favor you when there is a dispute <coughs> then lord uh, number man says kwa krosha why should i be partial why should i be why should i say something that is not good to you ಕೀತಾಶು ಮಮ ವಿದಿ ನೋ ನಾಟ್ ಓನ್ಲಿ ಇನ್ ದಿ ವೇದಾಸ್ ಈವನ್ ಇನ್ ದಿ ಗೀತಾ ಇಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಬೀನ್ ಮೆನ್ಷನ್ ದಟ್ ಮಮೈವಾಂಶ ಜೀವಲೋಕೆ ಜೀವಭೂತ ಸನಾತನ ಎಟ್ಸೆಟ್ರಾ ಎಟ್ಸೆಟ್ರಾ ದೆನ್ ದಿ ಜೀವಾತ್ಮ ಹೂ ಇಸ್ ವಿಜಯಲೈಸ್ ಟು ಮೀ ಹಿಮ್ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ಪರಾಶರ ಭಟ್ಟರ್ ವಿಜಯಲೈಸ್ ಹಿಮ್ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ಟು ಮೀ ಇಸ್ ಎ ಸ್ಕೋತ್ರ ಸಾಕ್ಷಿ how do i believe that geeta is authentic who is the person who is the witness who can certify that the geeta is perfect it has been authentic it is mentioning the truth only because han tatvat pakshapati even that is a literature that is actually partial to you <clears throat> so why should i actually accept that you are sub, i am subservient to you so the jeevaatma who is in the garb of parashara bhatta asks or rather parashara bhatta who is in the garb of the jeevaatma asks it in rikala he so when there is a quarrel between two people where something cannot be proved on account of witnesses or on account of some other means then what happens there are certain methods of doing a pratigna that is prevalent in the indian context that was prevalent in the indian context <laughs> of course today also it might be prevalent but it has been abused to such a large extent so suppose there is a quarrel between two persons one person will say i have given him 1000 rupees are 1 lakh rupees or 1 crore rupees 1 million dollars as <clears throat> a loan the other person says no he has not given it to me because there is no witness there is no evidence so how do i believe then what happens how to decide then in those days there were certain ways so then the <clears throat> middleman or the person who is supposed to resolve the dispute he will say you do one thing you actually what they will do is many the many types of such practices are there so they used to go to the temple and after performing the aarati 
the person who is supposed to <coughs> pledge or uh, uh, swear so that aarti will be offered in front of the person and the person will have to swear that i am what i am telling is the truth and he will actually uh, extinguish the aarti or the flame of the aarti and say yes what i am telling is the truth i have not taken money from him that is one way of doing it another way of doing it is so the person will wear a tulasi ma tulasi hara or garland of tulasi which is offered to the lord and then given to him and then he will stand in front of the lord wearing wet clothes yes like that what you have told is correct so wearing wet clothes he will wear a tulasi garland and then he will say yes what i am telling is the truth so he will swear because but if i am telling the truth i may lose my sins i may become the recipient of several 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 heinous sins and i may go to narak or something so here there is no resolution between swami namberumal and varashara bhatta who is representing the jeeva so then what is namberumal doing he is telling please believe me what i am telling is the truth so that is why i am wearing wearing a small tulasi hara and wearing wet clothes and then i am actually pleading with you at the time, same time i swear that so plead fully or something like that i am swearing that you belong to me kindly accept it see how beautifully <laughs> rajar bhatter has visualized a conversation between the supreme lord namberman and himself so is it says if namberman is actually pleading with the jeevatma saying that i am standing in front of you in wet clothes wearing a single tulsi hara and swearing that you belong to me uh, very beautiful this is a muktaka shloka so it means which actually is was mentioned by swami parashar bhatter when he actually went to have the darshan of number one who was who had just completed his abhishek and was standing there <coughs> with wet clothes so tvam me ham me kutas tat tadapi kuta idam veda mura pramana ृग्यमध्यस्थवत्मृग्यमध्यस्थवत्मेंट so it is not mentioned <laughs> directly in the uh, commentary of the moksha pandit <coughs> so um, so i we complete the class today with that and uh, i also completed the explanation of the uh, sutra <coughs> further a few issues are there which we'll come do in the next class Thank you, Swami, for Parashar. Ah, patience. The Romba Romba Nana and this Romba. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. Nah, credit should go to Swami Parashar, but not me. <laughs> Because he has authored such a wonderful shloka yeah. and visualized an entire conversation between him and the Supreme Lord, which only a stature of uh, only an acharya of his stature can actually do. And you raised awareness in us, Swami. That's why I'm I'm very appreciative. Yes. Thank you. So, any other uh, observations? Are we can conclude? So, uh, which uh, which uh, which uh, sutra have we finished up to? So, we are uh, we are uh, uh, three quarters way through fifty seven. We have finished the original text of the fifty seven sutra. so the commentary we have to study of the 57th sutra 
some uh, some last portion of the commentary is remaining of the 57th sutra. And you were mentioning so, it's uh, Antimo Paya? Sorry? Antimo Paya. Yes. Uh, yes, what is the question? So, uh, I'm sorry, you, the, before you were mentioning Antimo Paya. Yes. And yes. Uh, so, some people may think, what is this? What is this? Uh, can, we, can you uh, explain again? Just very simply, the this antima, yeah, anti antima means final. Yes, antima means final. Final upaya, final means. So that is antima upaya. That is Bhagavata Sanidhil Achidvat Paratantriyam. So Paratantriya or <coughs> total dependence, as if a, as a, an insentient object, with regard to a Bhagavata. That is Antimopaya. That is why it is the fifth, fifth stage. First stage is Bhagavad Paratantriya, Bhagavad Sheshatva. That is subservience to the Supreme Lord. Second stage is Bhagavad Paratantriya. Paratantra, that is why I said in Sheshatva, small idea of Swatantriya is there. Lakshmana doesn't, <laughs> does not wait for the acceptance of his services by Rama. <laughs> it is voluntary. He says, you have to accept it. <coughs> but Bhagavata Paratantriya is the next stage. Uh, Bhagavata Paratantriya, that is depicted by Bharata. <coughs> then Bhagavata Sheshatva, Bhagavata Paratantriya. So being Shesha to a Bhagavata is Bhagavata Sheshatva. Fourth state is Bhagavata Paratantriya. And fifth state is Bhagavata, Bhagavata Hilsandhira, Achidvat Paratantra. So Jadavat Paratantriya, Achidvat Paratantriya with regard to Bhagavata, that is the fifth stage. So that is the <coughs> mark of a true Shiva. There are several statements uh, in various works. It says Kraya Vikraya Arhadashaya Samindhati. So Kraya Vikraya Rasadashya means like we, <laughs> it existed in America several years ago, several uh, centuries ago, where the slaves were actually traded as if they were commodities. Of course, today it is being done in cricket and football, but it is done in a very sophisticated way. So <laughs> players are traded from one place to another. But since it is done in a very sophisticated way, people <laughs> do it. <laughs> but that is how, suppose I want to take Keshav Dasji and sell him in, <laughs> um, in a market, he should not object to it, he should say yes. And if he does the same with regard to me, I should also be there. Means, so yeah, nobody does like that practically, but that is the level of Paratantriya that one should have with regard to Bhagavatas. So that is known as Antimo Pahinishka. And that is, we find, we find that existed with regard to the, uh, uh, it existed such, an, uh, such a mentality existed in the uh, disciples of Manavalama. That's why he says, Apagata Madamanaihi Antimo Pahinishtaihi Adhigata Paramartha, Hi Artha Kama Anapekshi, etc. Nirjita Nikhila Jana Sorbhi, Nirjita Krothuno Dhai, Varavara Muni Vritya, Rastune Nitya Yoga. That's what an Acharya actually uh, asks for. A very beautiful shloka, it has to be explained at great length, I'll explain it on some other day. But this is the fifth state, that is Antipopaya, the final Upaya, that is being subservient to a Bhagavata, as if he, this, the person who is being subservient is like an insentient object. So, Bhagavat Sheshatva, Bhagavat Paratantriya, Bhagavata Sheshatva, Bhagavata Paratantriya, and Bhagavata Achidvat Paratantriya. That is the fifth stage, which is Antima. Antima means final. So, that is the final Lupaya, because <clears throat> when he is totally subservient to be to a Bhagavata, that means an Acharya. 
then what happens? Moksha is guaranteed. Because it is mentioned, Datte Rangi Nidama Pipadam Deshika Desha Kanji. Once again, Parashara Pitta. He says Rangi, that means who is the person who is the head of Ranga, that is Ranganatha. He will give his own place, that is Vaikuntha, to this Jivatma based on the <coughs> orders of the Guru. He says Deshika Adesha Kanji. So, Datte Rangi Nidama Pipadam Deshika Adesha Kanji. So, Ultimately, it is nothing but Acharya Abhimana, which is mentioned in the Sri Yachana Poshana of Kula Loka So he says, Acharya Abhimana me Uttarakam. So right. he should be totally subservient to the Acharya. That is Achidrat Paratantriya with regard to the Acharya. So this can but Acharya be... has to be a realized soul, that is also the Guru. So this, com this comes at the, at the culmination of the uh, Sri Vachana Bhushana. Sorry? Uh, of course, uh, Pila Lokacharya has taught in Artha Panchakam, he's mentioned uh, uh, Acharya Abhimanam. And, uh, and it, it comes to that point at the end of Sri Bhachana Bhushanam. Yes, that yes, it, yes. It's the final, the final conclusion. Yes. Because he says, Acharya Abhimanam, Prapatti Pore, Upayan, Tarangarit, Angamumai, Sotantromai, Rikum. Prapati lashaktanik prapati, prapati lashaktanik ide, ide pratamam soro patte pallavitamakum, indu pushpitamakum, anantaram palapariyam tamakum, and he completes Shiatan <laughs> Bhushman with those statements. So he says, Acharya Bhimanam, ye uttarakam. So even when we become totally incapable of performing prapati also, then what happens? We become totally subservient to an Acharya who is realized. Then that is done. Our task is done. Okay. So any other observation? So so uh, these these guess, stages are also shown. They are shown by the brothers of of uh, of Rama in Ramayana. Yes, because we we have to have a practical example, unless because. Uh, our knowledge of Ramayana is, people's knowledge of Ramayana is fairly good. And uh, the verses of Ramayana have also been quoted in this context. So where it says, Shatrugdha Nitya Shatrugdha Neetaha, just carried away. <laughs> so it's like that. If somebody else wanted to ask a question. Uh, Adiyan Dasan Namaskaram, this is Ram Srinivas. Yes, yes, please go ahead. Uh, sorry, go ahead. No, Ram Srinivas, you go ahead first, Swami. Yeah, thank you, Govinda Uh Swami, I just had one question. You had mentioned that uh, the ultimate goal of a Jivatma is to, uh, you know, have the Sheshatva, which is uh, the subservience. But you also separately mentioned that, you know, we are bounded by our past karmic actions. So now, how do we you know, uh, relate to that contradiction. So on the one side, we are bounded by past karmic actions. So how do we, in practice, develop this subservience uh, to the Lord? Yeah, that is why that is why we have to, the main aim of the Mokshupadi is we should engage in the Japa of the Ashtakshira Mahamantra, where continuously, we, what we know, what, what is known as Anusandhana, we continuously, uh, actually repeatedly, express our subservience, though we have not realized it, we express our subservience, which is the uh, essence of the entire Ashtakshara Mahamantra. And once <coughs> the Supreme Lord showers His grace on us, finally our uh, Swatantriya Brahma, or the illusion of our being independent will go, and automatically we will attain moksha. So the entire meaning why all these concepts are being explained here is, we should engage in the Japa of the Ashtakshara Mahamantra and the Mantra, which is once again a continuation and expansion of the Ashtakshara Mahamantra. So that is how it has to be done. Okay. Thank you, Swami. Namaskaram. Swami, I just wanted to ask, um, you said Acharya Abhimana is guaranteed way 
um, to attain moksha, but um, obviously the acharya must be qualified. But if we have full faith, okay, our acharya is fully qualified, he's totally qualified, but it might not be, you know, how it is that, um, what, what happens to that jiva? Is it that just as long as he has faith that he is qualified that the Lord will take care of the rest? So, uh, do you mean to say, how do we know that whether the Acharya is qualified or not? Yeah, we, we know that the Lord is always qualified, so that that's definitely guaranteed. But you're saying that this way is the final way and the most guaranteed way, but we have to ensure that the Acharya is qualified. Yes, that is why what happened, whether uh, now today we have been initiated by an Acharya. So, how do we know whether he is qualified or not? Uh, that is why we say, Adiyan Rama Anujadasa. So ultimately, right. through this through this acharya, we actually reach the feet of Ramanuja acharya. That is why it is a very beautifully beautiful statement or shloka by um, Kuresha, that is the father of Parashara Bhitta. He says <clears throat> there is a question <clears throat> asked by the Lord. That is the premise to say the shloka. Why should I accept you? Why should I grant you moksha? That is the answer. Question seemingly asked by the Lord to Swami Kuresha, who was, who was the father of <coughs> uh, Swami Parashara Bhattar, about whom we have discussed so far. He says, Ramanujan, Grisharanos, me, we know Ramanujan also, he says so. Because of his, he converts directly with the Lord in Sharanagati Kandya. And he had the vision of Vaikuntha itself when he was here. So there is no doubt that Ramanda Acharya was a realized soul. So ultimately, through the present Acharya, we are actually <coughs> the Shishyas of Ramanda Acharya himself. That is why you say Ramanuja Dasa. Though we owe allegiance, we owe our subservient to the present Acharya who has initiated also. <clears throat> in case he may have some fantasies as a human being and other things. But that does not come in the way of our attaining moksha. Because ultimately it is Ramanjacharya only who is actually our sum and substance to attain moksha. And that is what Kure, Kure, Kure Tarnan or Kure Shai is known. He says, Ramanujan Grisharanos Mikula Pradipaha. Who am I? If you are asking, I want to tell you. He tells the Lord. I am with great uh, pride. I want to declare I am the <coughs> subservient Shishya disciple of Raman Jajaya who has taken refuge under his feet. Rama Anuja Angri Sharana Osmi. Then who is Raman Jajaya? He is the direct disciple of Yama, Yamuna Acharya. And who is Yamuna Acharya? He is the grandson of Nathamuni. Because who is Nathamuni? Akritrimatva Charanaraminda Prema Prakaresha Vajim. The maximum level of bhakti or prema or love a person can have manifested itself in the person of Nathamuni. Person called Nathamuni also. And who is Nathamuni? He was directly initiated by Namalwar. Who is Namalwar? He was directly initiated by Vishwaksena. Who is Vishwaksena? He was directly initiated by Goddess Lakshmi. And who is Goddess Lakshmi? She is directly initiated by you. So I belong to such a hoary tradition due to which you cannot reject me on any count. I claim. <laughs> So though, this is what is known as Shasatvika Ankara. So Kurat Nalvan says, I claim my right to be given moksha. Not because I have any substance, I am of any <coughs> great uh, value. I feel myself I have any value. But I have a great value. That is, I have become the, I have surrendered to the feet of Lord Ramanda, Acharya Ramanda. And therefore, I have a claim to moksha. <laughs> So that's the, so when he is so much devoted to the Acharya, then the Lord cannot reject 
If he is devoted to the Lord, sometimes the Lord may reject. But when he has surrendered to the feet of Rama and Jatharya, totally, the Lord cannot reject. So that is why even though our, the, the Acharya that we see directly, he might be a human being, he is a human being, he may have several fallacies, he may be given to <coughs> Kama, Krodha, etc. He may have his own shortcomings. But that doesn't matter in this case. Because ultimately he is the representative of Ramanuja Acharya. And he leads us to Ramanuja Acharya through whom we attain function. So that is why I said Datte Rangi Nijama Pipadam Deshika Desha Kanshi. Lord Ranganatha will give his, will bestow a place in his abode of Vaikuntha based on the orders of the Acharya. Deshika means Acharya. So Deshika Desha Kanshi Nijama Pipadam that's what he says, Parajana Bhakti says. So it's a wonderful philosophy, wonderful sampradaya. Only thing is we have to follow it with such conviction. And then we can see the fruits slowly. So, and all the logical, logically any objection is raised, they have been answered. So I feel it's a sampradaya that is well-rounded, complete in all aspects. Not that I am telling one can realize when all such questions are answered in our, in the treatises or in the words of our Guru Acharyas. <coughs> Amazing. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much. I, I very much enjoy sharing what little, not what I know, what has been given to me by my Acharyas, my revered father and my Acharya and others. So, uh, it is a great uh, sharing of knowledge that I think is happening. So thank you. I am. I should be thankful to all of you because you have listened with so much of the uh, devotion and dedication and all those things. So I am. I should be very much grateful. Punyam boja vikasa ipapadvan takshayaita Shima navira bhutu mo rama anuja divakaraha Tanikata virinta diniram pushavi bhutayaha Mama anja padam boja samashta in a shadi the home. Once all I, when I was mentioning this shloka, it came. So this, it is Kuratalvan or Kuresha who is laying claim to Paramapada. <coughs> it's like, suppose. Somebody wants to enter the White House. And he says, hey, my Job, I am, uh, Joe Biden is my uncle. How can you refuse entry <laughs> to the White House? I am his nephew. You can never otherwise, if you uh, refuse, you may <coughs> go to the, <laughs> uh, approach the guards of the White House and tell, if you refuse entry, see what happens to you. <laughs> so he may even threaten <laughs> the Dwarapalakas or the guards who are uh, guarding the White House and says, I am Joe Biden's uh, nephew. How can you uh, refuse entry to me? <laughs> so similarly, Kurat Talwan says, since I have surrendered to Ramanuja Acharya, how can I actually, uh, how can you deny entry to Paravapada? So that was his wonderful conviction. It is based on, once again, Antimopaya Nishta, Acharya, Mana, whatever you call it. Thank you very much. Adi and Ramanuja Dasan. The news, Miss.